Hi, this is Jessica Adams. If you like astrology and murder mysteries, how about our new audiobook, The Aries Billionaire? Hi, I'm Rachel Wells. The Aries Billionaire is the first audiobook in my new series with Jessica, Leo Moon, Astrologer Detective. You can order it at audible.co.uk now. Leo Moon is the Hercule Poirot of horoscopes. Though he's a bit younger and better looking. And we really hope you like it. Rachel is a Sunday Times bestseller, so I predict you will. This is the Astrology Show podcast with Jessica Adams. Thanks, Shane. This is the Astrology Show for the week beginning Monday, February the 5th, Aries. Well, relationships that have fallen over in your past are now something to be absorbed and processed. One of these may have been toxic Aries. The reason for this is the south node in Libra in your seventh house of duets and duels, differences between people. And this is particularly partnerships that are no more, be they business or romantic, but also people that you've battled with in the past. The South Node will always get you looking back at yesterday, even 18 or 19 years ago. This week is really about sorting that out and clearing it up. Believe it or not, it is possible that you could recycle one or more of these relationships which have fallen by the wayside and clean them up, make them something new, really, in your life. But there are also two relationships here which are really very, very precious and important, which you may not be totally aware of. All of this is really about emotional fulfilment and the time is almost here when you can stop processing and absorbing and become who you're supposed to be for 2024. The great thing about your chart this week is that there is a bridge to the future and it involves a group, a group of friends, a group of allies, who understand that they can be together and cooperate with people power without getting in each other's way. So that's really flowing quite nicely in your horoscope. It looks as though this group is part of the bridge to the future. And the bridge to the future looks incredibly interesting because this is about somebody coming to you or you moving on geographically. That's really what's in your stars this week. Taurus, well, there's lots of money here showing up in your chart, either for you or for a woman who matters to you financially, or in terms of the garden, house or apartment. If you are a female Taurus, it could in fact be you who is surrounded by wealth. Does one spend it, save it or just invest it to make more of the filthy lucre? With Ceres and Sagittarius in your eighth house of joint finance, if you are a male Taurus, this may be your wife, your boss, your friend, or a business associate. To everything, there is a season. Series is now all about seasonal change, and the time is right to harvest what is there, do something new with it, invest it, and make sure that everything in the garden does remain lovely. And this is on a banking level, perhaps on a business level, or maybe it's about the garden, the house, the land, or the apartment. If you are a man and you need to understand where this woman is coming from, she has more than enough to negotiate with, with you, but you also need to understand that she's very much about growth. And if you're a woman, well, you have some choices to make this week, and they're all good ones. Gemini, this week is all about the next generation. This applies no matter if you are single and child-free or have a whole brood of children around you. The South Node in Libra is making a series of aspects in your fifth house, and the fifth house is where you rule, lead, and guide the children or the young adults if you're a woman. If you're a man, this may be your wife, your mother, the teacher of your children, and so on. This is almost a JK Rowling figure in the horoscope, very Leo influenced as she is, very strong. And if you are a Gemini woman, perhaps you have Leo factors in your chart which are about to come out. There is a project idea or concept here which will benefit the next generation. 
it is important for future growth. It also needs to be planted or nothing will happen. If you're a female Gemini, then you do need to get a wriggle on with this, as it is extremely promising and it has huge potential. If you're a male Gemini, then this woman needs to be supported and helped so that she can see this through to fruition because it does affect you and your views about the children or young adults in your world. Cancer, you are now in the right place at the right time, be it house, garden, local park or apartment. This is very true for female Cancerians as the South Node in Libra is in your fourth house of sanctuary, belonging and home. If you're a male Cancerian, this may be the woman in your life, whether she's landlady, friend, wife, girlfriend, mother, and so on. These aspects can only happen every 18 or 19 years or so. Good karma has put you where you belong if you are a female Cancerian. And if you're a male, there is this Mother Earth figure very close to you who is only too willing to connect and communicate on a heart level. She is the kind of woman for whom love is evergreen. Nothing ever dies and nothing ever goes away. It always renews itself like an evergreen tree. That's her emotional, psychological and spiritual take on things. So that's interesting for you to know if you are a male Cancerian. If you're a female Cancerian, then there is something here that you can recycle or renew emotionally. Venus is all over your chart this week. And Venus is all about love. Leo, the south node in Libra is about your ideas, projects, plans, qualifications, website, journalism, book, script, and so on. It is neatly tied to the north node in Aries in your sector of academia, the web, and publishing. So if you are a female Leo, this is quite a week. If you are a male Leo, this may be your wife, your girlfriend, your teacher, your mother, your boss, and so on. Female wisdom is where it's at this week, and it's the kind of wisdom that needs to be released. So this is almost ready to go, whether it's a qualification, a thesis, or a website. All of this week is about the written power of the word, but also perhaps the spoken power of the word as well. Pearls of wisdom are showing up in your horoscope, and the pearls very much belong to the female of the species. Of course, you can be a Leo woman and have a female mentor like this, or perhaps a female professor. However this plays out, it's really what's in the hand that matters. This proposal, this idea, this publication, or this piece of digital intelligence is extremely important. Virgo. Well, when we look at your horoscope this week, we realise that you are going to have to be the one to pull out of a situation which is emotionally complicated for more than one of you. You have two heart zones in your horoscope and both of them are loaded this week. So you have to ask yourself why you are propping this up with her or him or maybe them. You don't have to. We to leave or even withdraw emotionally, psychologically, then of course it would be difficult and there would be a fair bit of damage to repair. But the alternative is to keep on being involved in something that's really quite difficult to deal with emotionally. You currently have Saturn in Pisces opposite your sign and Saturn is a really big stretch. No way around it. One of the lessons is that it takes three or two to tango in this particular way and you're one of them so if you don't enjoy the dance then it's very important that you leave the dance floor or withdraw your interest in competing or being at loggerheads or filling the gap with others that's a bit of a conundrum for you this week but it's something that you can sort out Libra. Well, we have Diana with all her space, independence and freedom in your zone of groups. There is such a thing as too much space, though, which brings a lack of unity within the group, be this a club, a society, a band, a team, a charity and so on. Unless you all do something to join together, this will probably land in a heap. This is typical of Diana because she is associated with tribes, but also huge amounts of space and independence. Mm. This will all work out if you can use your famous talent for diplomacy, 
negotiation and people politics to bring everything together. You may have to start with just one other person who feels as you do, but the pair of you could then make sure that other pairs or even triplets within this wider group understand that it's now or never. Unless you all find the unity and the solidarity, the incredible potential is never going to be realised. The alternative is to just give up, really, and allow things to fall where they will. But that would actually be a waste of potential, especially because in your birth chart as well this week, we have all this Aquarius transit going on. And for you, that's really people power. Scorpio, well, when we see a stellium in Pisces in your chart, we just know that there is a lack of reality. And of course, this is your son, your younger friend, your younger lover, perhaps your nephew, godson, and so on. Sometimes it can be a girl with a tomboyish side, but it's more usually a male who has a strong female side. If you are yourself younger than just about everybody else, then this is you. But for the most part, you seem to be dealing with somebody that's really in another reality or in another world, and he is your junior. How you communicate and connect is really about understanding his mindset because he's not grounded. He has no interest in wearing a suit and tie, for example, or dressing for the job, and he may not even work. He may be the classic student, or you're dealing with somebody that's working in a profession where he is allowed to be an escape artist. There is something here that is quite promising and quite special, and it's in your interest and certainly in his to make sure that it works out. But at the moment, it doesn't look as if anything's going to come of it. Wrong approach. How you play your part is up to you. But as I said, if you're going to deal with somebody who's so strongly Pisces symbolic this week, no matter what their chart looks like, you have to understand that they're a pretty slippery fish. They're quite elusive, hard to get hold of. If you want to communicate, you are going to have to speak their language. Sagittarius, well, the money is the story this week because we have quite a lot of Capricorn aspects and that's all about bargaining, deal-making, negotiation, paying out or receiving. This is about a man, or if you are a male Sagittarian, it's probably about you. What we also have in your chart this week is Apollo, right at the other end of your horoscope, which is where you sort out your life budget. Now, the Capricorn part of the deal is rather slow, grounded, steady, guarded and cautious. So this is the very picture of something taking ages to work itself out, either because you or the man in question is in no tearing hurry to talk business or numbers. But there is something of value here because Capricorn is a grounded earth sign. And if you want to see productivity and results, you will allow the process to talk, take all the time that it has. And if you yourself need to take time, then you'll make sure that others understand that. This is a week for investment, for spending or for purchase, and it has a kind of solid feeling to it. Capricorn, Diana in Leo is in your sector of the afterlife and departed family and friends, plus extended family in spirit. And Diana is a symbol of liberation. So this week is Independence Day for somebody in the spirit world tied to you. This affects you too, if you are sensitive to it. And of course, it can also be true that you do something on this side of life or you say something which helps those in spirit evolve and go forward. There is a feeling this week of breakthrough. And of course, in spirit, we go through stages of growth, just as we do here, but on a soul level. So these people also need to grow and they need to hear the call spiritually. This may also be because of events which take place in your own extended family or your circle of friends, which immediately have a galvanising effect on the departed. So this may also be a case of them waiting for somebody to do something that will set them free and allow them to move on. It's quite an intense time, but Diana in Leo is worth enjoying for what it represents which is freedom, liberation, and a new way of being, both here and also for those in spirit. Aquarius, 
Well, there is a lot to be said for joining a crew and climbing aboard a group enterprise. It stops the isolation and the detachment for a start. This is true of a man that you know, or perhaps you yourself, if you are a male Aquarian. If you're a woman, then this week is definitely about a man. We have an overload of Pisces in the heavens, and whenever you get that, there is a kind of drifting, floating quality to people. This is about a man who doesn't settle down and is not connected, and he tends to float on the tides and currents. The big change in this, though, is the appearance or reappearance of a group, a community or a circle. Now, it would take a massive change for him or for you to join a group, but sometimes change is what is required. This is really coming from your birth chart because you were born with a sign in the 11th house of communities and for the first time in 248 years, that's where Pluto just landed and Pluto is about transformation. So you are concerned with this crew or the man in, in question and if you are perhaps detached, cut off in your own space, feeling removed from the real world and you are a male Aquarian, it would be well worth your time to have a look at what and who is on offer. Pisces, the south node in Libra in your finance zone and the north node in Aries in your assets, business, charity and property zone do all the talking this week. If you are a woman, this may well be you with a lump sum or it may be a female you consider to be enjoying the good life but she has money there too which also affects you. If you are a man, this is definitely a woman, maybe your wife or girlfriend or your business partner. Maybe it's your bank manager. Now, Libra is ruled by Venus, the goddess of the good life. She is associated with all the finest sculpture and paintings. So we might say that you are a tastemaker if you're a Pisces woman, and now there is enough money there to please your taste. If you are a male Pisces and trying to get inside the head of this woman, then you need to understand that her value system is all about what is beautiful and what is forever. And it may well be nature that appeals to her. Understanding her life budget helps you sort things out with her on another level. This week's tarot cards can be interpreted at my website, jessicaadams.com. Aries, the Five of Cups, Taurus, the Nine of Pentacles, Gemini, the Queen of Wands, Cancer, the Empress, Leo, the High Priestess, Virgo, the Three of Swords, Libra, the Eight of Wands, Scorpio, the Page of Cups, Sagittarius, the Knight of Pentacles, Capricorn, Judgment, Aquarius, the King of Cups, and Pisces, the Queen of Pentacles. Babies born this week are unusual Aquarians in that Pluto is also an Aquarius, so they are powerful in and out of teams, clubs and communities all their lives, even as small children. They'll naturally want to make friends with those from different backgrounds and they do not discriminate between boys and girls. Happy birthday this week to Nigel Tufnell, who is 76 on the 5th of February. Brian Hearn's favourite, Mike Batt, who is 75, on the 6th of February. Bob Marley would have been 79 on the 6th of February. And Alan Lancaster would have been 75 on the 7th of February. If it's your birthday, then many happy solar returns. You will be astonished at how much more freedom you have with your house, apartment or other residence in April. Fated connections this week involve money. Pisces, the Queen of Pentacles, Taurus, the Nine of Pentacles, and Sagittarius, the Knight of Pentacles. One, two, or all three of you may find it's time to strike a deal. In your personal birth chart this week, look at any factors that you have in Aquarius, the sign of groups and friends. It's not the dawning of the age of Aquarius, and it is the right place and right time to become who you are, despite that. That person is, is a supplier to the group. It may be a club, a team, a band, a trade union, or anything else. It may even be the scouts. But whatever interests you is about to be rebooted with these people, if you do have Aquarius factors, and a new group and friendship, which appears now, is dynamite. 
Mercury enters Aquarius on the 5th of February, and on the 9th of February, we have a new moon in Aquarius, and all this with Pluto in Aquarius as well, his brand new sign. So your birth chart shows this, or the people around you are certainly living up to it, because it's the start of group discussion or really important new social and friendship connections. At the moment, what you're also dealing with is a big change around half the planet. It's Lunar New Year, Year of the Dragon. Saturday the 10th of February is the start of the true Asian year based on the first new moon of the lunar calendar. I'll talk more about this on YouTube, but from Cambodia to South Korea, Singapore and Shanghai and Chinatowns all over the world. This is about a completely different zodiac. Year of the Dragon, or Naga in Thailand, will be followed by Year of the Snake on the 29th of January 2025 and Year of the Horse on the 17th of February 2026. As you can see, the first new moon falls on different dates. This does tie in with Western astrology, though. The 12 signs of the Asian zodiac are based on divisions of Jupiter's 12-year cycle, with the star thought to oppose Jupiter during each lunar year, personified as a general, a god, a grand duke, and so on. This is really old astrology, and it goes back to the Silk Road. The Roman astrologers met the Asian astrologers in the middle and everybody was watching Jupiter. In all cultures, Jupiter represents luck and good fortune. So this is where the idea comes from, that if you are a dragon, in Year of the Dragon, then your luck is in. Now, lots of you wanted to hear more about power hours, which is when stars are aligned in the Western Zodiac and things flow. Rachel Wells, who is the author of the Leo Moon Astrologer Detective series, has the answers about power hours this week. Follow her on social media to find out more about why the 8th of February is important and what hour will be powerful for you no matter what city you're in. You can follow Rachel on Substack, Twitter and the rest to receive a regular weekly power hour not just for the UK where she is, but for your part of the world too. I am the astrology consultant on the Aries Billionaire, which is the first Leo Moon mystery on Audible audiobooks. As we end the week, having gone through the beginning of Year of the Dragon on Saturday, there's a feeling that you can leave last year far behind. This is in fact reflected in Asian culture, they get a broom and sweep out the old and bring in the new. This is also, in Western astrology, a very new new moon in Aquarius alongside Pluto. Things will be quite intense. It will feel as if some of the rubbish has been moved out of your life and being recycled. And there are particular signs that feel this more than others, Aries being an obvious example. It's time to let yesterday go. This is true no matter if you're involved in a love triangle, which some of you are, or whether you're in a group that appears to be heading for a bit of a mess or a muddle. It may happen because you feel that you have to let the past go in terms of younger people who live on a different planet to you. Whatever you're leaving behind, you may be interested in getting rid of the rubbish from your own life as well, in your house or your apartment. Again, this is the Asian approach. Everything is cleaned up and sorted out. You'll see a lot of that going on around you. But as this is also a big Aquarius transit in the heavens, what this week is all about is understanding that it is no longer about power coming from the top down from just one man. It is about power being shared collectively amongst the community or the circle with every single interest group represented. You'll really notice that in the headlines. That's one of the things to watch out for this week. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch up with you again next week. Bye.